Princess Diana and Hasnod Khan, a secret love story. For two years the Princess of Wales was in a secretive relationship with a London surgeon. Princess Diana will be forever linked with Dottie Fade, the man with whom she was having a fling at the time of her tragic death. But according to those who knew her best, her heart belonged to a British Pakistani doctor. Diana was 35 when she met 37-year-old heart surgeon Hasnat Khan in 1995 and would have a secretive relationship that would span two years and inspire the 2013 film Diana, starring Naomi Watts, based on Kate Snell's book Princess Diana, Her Last Love. At that time of her life, Diana's divorce proceedings with Prince Charles were nearing the end. They had separated in 1992 bringing to an end a fairy tale union that had captivated the world, and Diana was living alone in Kensington Palace. She had shared custody of her and Charles's sons, William, then 13, and Harry, 11. Diana and Hasnot met in London's Royal Brompton Hospital, where Hasnot was assisting in the triple bypass surgery of Joseph Toffolo, the husband of Diana's friend Una Toffolo, an acupuncturist and healer. According to Una, Diana said, isn't he drop-dead gorgeous? Born in the Punjab province of Pakistan, Hasnat was a distant cousin of Imran Khan. The dedicated cardiac surgeon had worked in Sydney for a while before he moved to London where he worked 90-hour weeks. As Diana continued to visit Joseph on a regular basis at the hospital, she and Hasnat struck up a friendship. Hasnat then plucked up the courage to ask her out on an unlikely date for a princess. I mentioned that I needed to go to my uncle's house in Stratford-upon-Avon to pick up some books, he told police in 2004, during the inquest into Diana's death. I did not think for one minute that she would say yes, but I asked her if she would like to come with me. I was very surprised when she said she would. What followed was a very good relationship recalled Hasnot. The only problem we did have was with the media and the only place we could have any real privacy was at Kensington Palace as they could not get to us there. Through Hasnot, the people's princess enjoyed experiencing how the other half lived. We once went to the pub together and Diana asked if she can order the drinks because she had never done so before, said Hasnot. She really enjoyed the experience and chatted away happily to the barman. On another occasion we had to queue to get into Ronnie Scott's jazz club. She later said she loved queuing as you get to meet so many people. According to Hasnot, the couple talked about marriage, but the doctor worried about what such a marriage would do to his life. I knew I would not be able to live a normal life, he said. I did not want that sort of lifestyle. Still, the princess asked her butler, Paul Burrell to make inquiries with a priest about getting married in secret. When you think of the kind of man Diana must have met or been with or seen, here is a man who is completely and totally selfless, an unnamed friend told Vanity Fair. She said she'd never met anybody like him. In the end, there were too many obstacles for the couple to have a lasting future together, including the fact that Hasnod's family expected him to marry someone from a similar Pashtun background. In June 1997, Diana now officially divorced from Charles, accepted an invitation from Harrod's owner and billionaire Mohammed Alfade to spend a week at his villa in Street Trope on the French Riviera. She took William and Harry and spent time both at the villa and on board the Alfade family's dollar U.S. 30 million yacht, John Ockle, with Mohammed's son, Dottie, who was then engaged to model Kelly Fisher. When Diana returned to London, she ended the relationship with Hasnot, and in the following months it became clear through paparazzi photos she was in a relationship with Dottie. But those closest to her believed the fling was an attempt to make Hasnot jealous. I suppose it is possible that Diana was trying to make me jealous, but I do not believe that was the entire reason she was doing it, said Hasnot. I think that when she had gone away on the boat she had felt protected and thought she would wait and see what happened with Dottie. By August she was back on the John Ackle with Dottie, before the couple took a private plane to Paris. On the August 31st night of the fatal crash in the Alma Tunnel in Paris, which claimed the lives of Diana, Dottie and Diana's driver Henri Paul, has not tried to reach the princess. I tried to ring Diana the night she died, but could not get through to her, said has not who attended Diana's funeral. I later found out that she had changed her number. These days, Hasnot still lives in England and continues to work as a heart surgeon. He has been engaged twice since Diana's death, 
and in 2006 wed Hadiya Sheralu, 28, in Pakistan in an arranged marriage. They divorced two years later. I think that if Diana were alive today, we would have remained very good friends. Whatever she did and whomever she was with, has not told police in the inquest. I do not know what Diana was like in other relationships but she protected me very well, not just from the media but also from a lot of information. Perhaps she protected me because she thought we had a future together.